Hey, I'm meteorologist Doug Myers with the latest forecast on this Friday. This is going to be a fairly long video going over some seasonal outlooks, including the latest winter outlook, so stick with me. I'll try and go as quickly as uh, possible so you're not sitting here for 10 minutes. I'll try and make it around 5, but uh, just be mindful it might be a little bit longer because of that. Meanwhile, temperatures yesterday, low to mid-70s uh, for uh, the temperatures, and we had wind gusts around 30 to 45 miles per hour for much of the area, so it was a fairly windy day and uh, it might come down just a little bit for today but it's still going to be at the very least breezy if not windy doesn't really matter what word I use. No, the winds are going to be a factor again today. But we're going to be warmer, mid to even upper 70s, and we'll have a little bit of cloud cover, especially by the afternoon, that we'll be keeping an eye on as well. Meanwhile, we can see a supercast with wind gusts, the strongest winds once again, mainly out in our western communities. Wind gusts could be approaching 40 miles per hour, and then generally speaking, we are looking at uh, 20 to 30 mile per hour wind gusts by the afternoon. So again, a little bit less wind than uh, what we had uh, from yesterday. And then winds should not be a factor at all over the weekend. At worst, maybe a 20 to 25 miles per hour, but certainly a lot lighter winds, especially with the sustained winds compared to yesterday and what we'll have for today. Uh, again, we will have a little bit of cloud cover this afternoon. There is some uncertainty on how much cloud cover we'll have. Uh, this is one of our short-term models uh, showing generally sunny all day, not a whole lot of cloud cover. Our other computer model is uh, indicating a little bit more cloud cover moving in this afternoon. So that's why I am going mostly sunny, uh, just uh, on by chance that this plays out like this uh, with today. It shouldn't have a huge impact on high temperatures, maybe a few degrees cooler than the expected forecast high, uh, but I don't think those clouds will have much of an impact on our temperatures and won't drop any rainfall until perhaps early tomorrow morning in north central Kansas, seeing maybe a few spotty showers or some sprinkles early in the morning. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. I'm actually in tomorrow morning. Uh, so we'll be uh, monitoring that closely during the 8 to 9 newscast. So definitely uh, check back uh, for tomorrow's uh, update. But even if anything does manage to move into the area, cloud, maybe clay in Washington County, worst case scenario, you're getting up to a tenth of an inch. Even that, I, I really don't think it's going to be that much, maybe just a couple hundredths of an inch. And then at the very least, there will be some clouds, even if no rain falls in the morning in north central Kansas, and then clouds will clear out with plenty of sun by the afternoon. So I did adjust the uh, forecast to uh, partly cloudy to mostly sunny on Saturday. But still a little bit of cloud cover in the morning. And then sunshine on Sunday. Temperatures are continuing the warming trend over the next three days. And then a brief cool down Monday because of rain showers moving into the area. Let's talk about that rain chance on Monday. Speaking of which, it's been a while since we've had rain. The last time Topeka had more than a tenth of an inch of rain, you have to go back to September 22nd with 0.16 inches. Now, the day before that, got about two thirds of an inch of rainfall. So it has definitely been a while. But with that rain moving in Monday and continuing into at least Monday evening, dry by Tuesday, no doubt about that. But uh, we are gonna be looking at uh, the European model showing many spots getting about a quarter inch to a third of an inch worth of rainfall. That's pretty good. Not a drop buster, but at least it's something. And uh, taking a look at the uh, GFS, again, nothing through Sunday. And then uh, pushing, mainly impacting our Western communities more so. So it's almost kind of reversed. The European model so far this week has been more scattered in nature, where some areas were getting less than a tenth of an inch, other areas were getting more. And the GFS was more widespread. Now they're almost kind of reversing each other. So there's still some uncertainty. Obviously, we'll continue to monitor that throughout the weekend, so stay tuned for that. Here's a, a couple of our outlooks uh, showing equal chances of drier than normal, wetter than normal, and obviously showing above normal temperatures as well. Here's where this video is going to go a little bit longer than usual because the preliminary outlook for the month of November has come out. And of course, this is going to be updated November 1st uh, as well. But uh, equal chances of drier than normal and wetter than normal. Hey, at least that's something. It's not drier than normal. So we'll obviously be uh, keeping a close eye on that and then a probability of above average uh, temperatures for the month of November. Now, here's a look at the November through January time frame, the three month outlook, equal chances of drier than normal, wetter than normal, and probability of above average temperatures. That's the November through January. Winter is defined as December through February. So what about that uh, seasonal outlook? Well, because I can't have more than, well, I could, I could make another graphic altogether, but let's just go straight off the internet here. Here is the uh, latest outlook. It is the official outlook uh, for the winter months 
from the National Weather Service. Equal chances of drier than normal and wetter than normal. And then as far as uh, temperatures are concerned, equal chances of drier than normal and or equal chances of above average temperatures and below average temperatures. But you can kind of see that uh, across the country, if you're curious, dry down to the south, more wet up to the north. And because of that, it's going to be below average up to the north because of that uh, precipitation. And then because it's drier down to the south, that's reason why it's going to be warmer. Obviously, it's just an, a generalized outlook. We can't specify what's going to happen when. Just the general three-month outlook. So, obviously, that's going to be something we'll have to take on a month-by-month, week-by-week, day-by-day forecast. As far as next work week is concerned, we will have a cold front pushing through Tuesday night and Wednesday that will briefly cool us down midweek. There is some uncertainty in how cool it will get. Some models are indicating we might get down in the 30s Thursday morning. That looks to be our coolest morning of the next seven nights. And then uh, temperatures start to rebound uh, after that, warming back up for Thursday and Friday. So generally speaking, it is going to be mild and dry for the next eight days, but keep an eye on that rain chance Monday into Monday night. Maybe a few sprinkles in north central Kansas tomorrow morning. Don't count on a whole lot. Don't count on it being very impactful. But if you're going to be out and about, you may have to use the windshield wipers if you're in a car or you may have uh, a wet roadway. That's about it. Nothing very impactful at all. Keeping my eye on Monday and a Monday night being more impactful across the area. So stay tuned for the next three days. We'll continue to keep you updated on those details.